Call the meeting to order. Please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Good evening to and welcome to our first meeting of August of the school board. Do I have a motion to approve the minutes of the meeting held July 26? So moved. Second. I have a motion and a second. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. The minutes are approved. Uh, we'll first go to the persons wishing to address the board on nine agenda items. Um, there's only one, and so you'll have five minutes to address the board and please state your name and address at when you come up to the microphone and, and podium. Chad Bishop, please, thank you. And Kate will give a little warning for one minute and 30 seconds left too, thank you. No. Oh, don't worry, your time's not counting. Very well. <laughs> okay. <laughs> there you go. Thank you, my name is Chad Bishop. I live at 7405 South Valencia Drive here in Sioux Falls. Um, today I'm coming to ask you to consider um, reinvigorating the FIRST program in the Sioux Falls School District. FIRST stands for Inspiration and Recognition of Science and Technology. I would like to back up and say thank you for the opportunity to provide my supporting materials uh, that I mentioned in my previous statement two weeks ago regarding added sugar in meals served in the school district. I'd like to make you aware that uh, Director Gay Anderson has reached out to me, it was very cordial, and she had offered to have a meeting to address my concerns, so thank you for that. <clears throat> David, I don't know why my heart just goes <laughs> on a mic, but it does. Um, I am here today to ask, or to make you aware of the first STEM programs and that they qualify for funding under the American Rescue Plan Elementary and Secondary School Emergency Relief Programs. I do have flyers that do address this, and it's a playbook to help uh, provide and reinvigorate this program in the school district. Uh, I already mentioned FIRST stands for Inspiration and Recognition of Science and Technology. I personally have been involved with FIRST programs since the founder, Dean Kamen, personally asked me to get involved about eight years ago while we were at a conference together. I started coaching Junior First Lego League and then First Lego League and I finally started and helped mentor a first tech challenge team here in Sioux Falls. All told, I have about 11 seasons under my belt in three of the four programs, and I can offer um, insight into those programs if that is helpful. These programs, while coaching in these programs, I've helped kids from six to 15 develop the critical thinking skills as well as social and emotional competencies that are required to be successful in a rapidly advancing world. The program has about 680,000 participants, over 110 countries. Of course, kids learn how to program, solve problems, communicate and build robot, robots, but they also have fun. How First School is about this is through its program of core values and the unique concepts of gracious professionalism and cooperation that make these programs exemplary. The core values are to discover, innovation, impact, inclusion, teamwork, and of course, fun. My ask today is to please distribute the First America Rescue Plan flyer widely across the district. I would um, like you to enable interested staff in the district to start and to coach teams and to consider once again hosting this program in the district facilities. I would ask that you consider, oh, I hit that part. My offer here today is my experience here with FIRST, I'm willing to um, explore the program and specifically the FIRST School District Partnership Program together. MB's director, Jeremy Haugen, and myself are available to help guide any teacher who would be interested, any staff who would be interested, and if they have questions about how to found or coach a team. And I will make myself available to yourself should you have any additional questions. For your benefit, I had emailed each of you before I knew the meeting rules. I apologize for that. Please help guide me on how I should do that in the future. Um, but there were some two short videos that should give you some insight into the outcomes that are possible through this program. I share your goals of making the Sioux Falls School District the best district in the country, and I believe FIRST can be a critical component of us achieving those shared goals. Thank you for your time. Thank you very much. I just have one quick question. Did you say cooperation? 
Cooperation, yes. That is an awesome word. Yeah. So it's the spirit of um, the teams. They, um, they share how to do everything. So teams will publish how you solve this particular problem, how you build this particular me mechanism, how you program this particular um, algorithm. And they share it amongst themselves and they're actually given and encouraged to do so and when they do it and they can effectively demonstrate it, they're given points in the competition. That's awesome. And so in the spirit, you know, they're trying to instill a spirit um, that you would see at a large scale sports event, but around STEM. And I would even, it's expanded to STEAM since a lot of these kids have a very artistic flair. So that is a major component of it also. Awesome, thank you very much. Thank you. No, no, the word, it's a new word for us. Uh, we will move on to the persons wishing to address the school board on agenda items. We'll first start with those opposing administrative recommendation. Same rules, please step up to the podium and state your name and address. We'll start with Mary Shield Bussey, please. And you each have five minutes as well because we only have two on each side. I sent you all an email this afternoon that um, contained uh, 47 different studies confirming that the masks are useless and prevent COVID infection and transmission. I, oh, thank you. <laughs> Do you want me to start again? Oh, no, you're fine. Okay, good. Um, uh, <laughs> I appreciate all the work that you've all done in the last year and a half, an enormous monumental task. I appreciate the mask optionals that you have for this fall. Um, I'm, I, today I, I'm, I'm asking that you make them optional for all grades, every class, and even on the buses. Um, I understand that last school year students who chose not to wear a mask were treated differently by a few teachers and because I pick up at two different schools every day for grandchildren. Um, when I would ask them, you know, especially when different children would get in for a ride home, um, you know, how, how's it going? You know, they would be uncomfortable in their mask and they would say, well, why do you wear it all day? Well, in this class, this teacher treats those kids who don't wear a mask different. And I'd ask that all, treat, all teachers treat every child the same, whether they're parents or whether a 17 and 18 year old, some of them, choose to wear a mask for whatever reason. Um, no child should be coerced into wearing a mask by a teacher or any school employee. It's a parent's choice. Again, I thank you for your service. I thank you for all the work that you've done. And I just ask that you just take this little extra step for us. Thank you. Thank you, Mary. Next, um, also opposing administration uh, recommendation is Kimberly Henderson. <coughs> Kimberly Henderson, uh, 3408 South Goldenrod Lane in Sioux Falls, 57110. Wasn't planning on doing this, so <laughs> um, I guess like the opposed part is just because I too think that all ages it should be um, optional and I even have a tough time with the word optional because I'm afraid of where that could go down the road even just in the weeks ahead. I think that it should be a choice and I can speak to my household last year um, when they were required before we realized there was a list that we could be put on. I saw a change in my kid and he just, uh, he didn't like school. He didn't like going, he was angry about it. He hated the masks. Um, we can get into the separation on the playground. It was a miserable year. And I know that's not anyone here's fault, but it was a tough year. So I just think that if we can lift that, once we put him on that list that he wasn't required to wear a mask, it changed, it changed his um, demeanor and we saw that in our house. So I just, um, I can believe that that probably is the case in other houses. So just that it's up to the parents whether they're wearing masks or not. And I agree, um, treated different by different teachers even though he was had permission to not wear a mask. He still was given grief by teachers. So I guess that's just my opposition is the masks in general, that it just be up to the parents whether they want their child to wear a mask or not, no matter what grade they're in. Thank you. Now we'll move on to those supporting administration, administrative recommendation. We have two as well as Matt, so you each have five minutes. Amy Bruner.
Good evening. I'm Amy Bruner, and I'm at uh, 3420 South Alpine Avenue. And I guess I'm not exactly sure if I signed up for the right um, opposed or in favor. Um, when your initial plan for Return to Learn came out, um, I felt that you had done a very good job of reviewing the totality of the situation and appreciating that there are families who feel strongly on both sides of an issue, of the masking issue in particular. And I felt that leaving the option open to families, giving children and families an option to wear masks at school or to not wear masks at school was very reasonable, it was very rational, leaving the choice to families. Um, I thought that that was a great solution. This morning, um, I happened to notice on the news that there was a meeting tonight and started digging into the agenda um, and was a little surprised to note the changes with the word encourage that is included. And <clears throat> my concern would be similar to what some of my colleagues have said with the word encourage for those pre-K through five children. What does that mean? What does it mean if they don't? What type of retaliation or pushback will they receive from fellow students or teachers? And the word encourage as related to students who are vaccinated in that six through 12 category, what does that word encourage mean there? And whose business is it of anyone's? who's vaccinated and who's not. That's medical information. So that would be my concern with regard to the new plan. If that new plan were to go through, I would support you in that as long as we're very careful with what encourage means and that there's fair treatment for every student across the school district for whatever decision their families make. So that's where I have a little bit of conflict, con or where I'm a little conflicted. Should I be on the opposed side or the in favor side? I'm not sure where that is. But I think you've done a good job of um, reviewing the totality of things, and I do appreciate the fact that families have a choice in this, and I hope that uh, um, that this is as far as it goes. Leave families to have a choice, please. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Amy. Next, we have Zoe Dahmer and five minutes for you as well. Thank you. Hi, I'm Zoe Domer. I'm from 3420 South Goldenrod Lane, Sioux Falls, South Dakota, 57110. I'm also uh, gonna be a sophomore at Lincoln High School, and I might have accidentally signed up for the wrong side of it too, I'm sorry <laughs> about that. Uh, I'm here to speak for behalf like of some of the students and myself. Last year, I went the whole school year without a mask on, and I felt really uncomfortable walking to school. Like every day, I thought of it as a risk. Like they would either like come to me or like here, have a mask, and I would refuse, and then they would kind of just look at me, and I felt just kind of out of place. And it was really rough. Like I didn't want to go to school some days because of that. And um, sorry, I didn't have like really much prepared for this, but um, I'd walk in and I didn't really want to go. Like I want school to be a safe, like fun environment, especially like as a teenager, life can get rough sometimes, you know, and I want it to be safe and I want it to be comforting just, you know, like even for a mass and like against a mass, like I want it to be like fair and equal for all kids. So I speak on behalf of no mass, that would be amazing. Thank you. Thank you very much. And um, for all that spoke on the, the continue to learn plan 11A is the item on the agenda. Many, of, I think your questions will be answered. So if you can stay around to have those answered, um, we hope to get those answered all for you. So thank you very much. On to the approval of the agenda. Do I have a motion to approve? So moved. Second. I have a motion and second. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. The agenda is approved. Now to the good news report, Deanne. Oh, 
Oh, Ooh, that's silly looking. <laughs> we'll hope this works. Good evening, everyone. Uh, each month throughout the 21-22 school year, we will be walking through some of the photos, stories, and other historic documents of the Sioux Falls School District in celebration of the district's 150th anniversary. Tomorrow, August 10th, Tuesday at 4.30 p.m. at Jefferson High School, we will officially kick off our celebration of the 150th anniversary with a program, again, beginning at 4.30. We'll do some tours after that of Jefferson High School. So we're rolling all of the celebration of the opening of Jefferson, um, there will be a ribbon cutting a chamber event tomorrow at 11.30. Public's welcome to that as well. Uh, 4.30 is really the focus on our 150th anniversary and our state of the schools address by Dr. Stabum. So again, community is welcome to attend. This evening though, we wanna take a look at one of our flagship buildings in the Sioux Falls School District. And of course, that is the old Washington High School, which now serves as the Washington Pavilion. Construction on the original building began in 1904 after Central School, also known as Irving, became too small due to growing student enrollment. As you know, Sioux Falls was growing and uh, the economy was uh, very strong. And so we had more students showing up in our buildings from, uh, oops, went past. Um, so you can see the picture on the left is from 1907. That's a Northeast view of the building. In the top right is 1909, the North entrance and on the bottom, 1912 from the north side. So that building, um, again, was constructed in 1904. It opened on February 14th, 1908, with 328 students. I'll share more about enrollment in just a second. Um, this is one of the first basketball teams of Washington High School. Very simply, there was a right forward, a left forward, a center, a right guard, and a left guard. And you can see some of the schools that they played. Um, they played the, Debar the Baraka Club at Sioux Falls. The score was 22 to 10, Washington won. Uh, Vermilion at Vermilion, I'm unsure about why we have two. <laughs> I wonder if it's not Sioux Falls at Vermilion and then Vermilion at Sioux Falls, not sure exactly. But you can see some of those uh, games. Unfortunately for Sioux City maybe, um, Sioux City at Sioux City was 17 to 22. That doesn't seem like much of a basketball game. <laughs> um, so I'm not really sure, but it, nonetheless, um, you can see the, the attire that the basketball team wore. And this is from one of our um, 1907 annuals. So here's student enrollment. As I mentioned in 1908, when Washington High School opened, there were 328 students. And then in 1922, a little more than, uh, so about 14 years later, that enrollment had um, climbed to 959. And in 1930, it climbed to 1,660. So you can see that growth um, just over about a 22 year period. That meant that again, more space was needed. So the district approved remodeling on the North Wing in 1932 of Washington High School. And in 1935 then, the center unit of Washington High was completed. Um, Jeff Kreider, knowing that I was going in search of old, um, items had this hanging, this picture hanging on his wall. And in the center, you can see vote yes. That is the center part of the building that was built between or in 1935. And that center part of the building, if you're familiar with the old Washington High School, that is a photo of the auditorium that was added. So lots of seating in the Washington High Auditorium, which was that central portion that was added in the mid 1930s. That building remained as a, 
a staple of downtown Sioux Falls. Lots of stories to go along with that. I've had an opportunity to talk to former um, principals and former graduates of there to learn about some of the interesting um, times of being in downtown Sioux Falls. The top right-hand corner is uh, from 1954 in the southeast corner. And the bottom view is also a southeast corner um, in 1992. That is the last year that Washington High School was in downtown Sioux Falls as we opened the new Washington High School out at its current location. I would be remiss if I did not mention the wonderful historic committee of Washington High School. They have a website out there that is very detailed. It is, uh, have it, W-H-S, oh, I can't, my eyes are failing. W-H-S-H-C.org, Washington High School Historic Committee.org. The charter members of that committee were Barbara White, Vance Penning, Barb Harding Hines, Carol Strain Jameson, Linda Hart, Dale Hart, Don Erickson, Tom Lehmans, Suzanne Farrell, Bob Caselli, Marlis Arndt, Ken Kessinger, and Ruth Adkins. And that um, was the, is the, uh, the charter committee for uh, Washington High School. They continue to do amazing work. They meet monthly and they are all about Washington High School. If you've been up on the top floor of the Washington Pavilion, you can see some of the artifacts that they have collected over time. You can also find photos and just a variety of stories and information, um, past principals, teachers who, who taught there. They have done a, a wonderful job of collecting the history of Washington High School. Um, let's see. One more. And because it would be nothing better than great to hear, I want to play the Washington High School song as it was recorded in 1960. was Washington High School's 38th annual homecoming celebration, Orange Letter Day. Friday's festivities were the climax of weeks of preparation for the many aspects of homecoming. Homerooms and clubs had worked feverishly on their floats for the parade. I've lost the band my, and performers um, were preparing their act for the talent here. show, <laughs> the royalty was rehearsing with the orchestra for coronation, it's and the band was practicing their halftime show for the homecoming game with Boys Town. At 8 o'clock Thursday morning, the Sioux Falls I will let you go out and listen to the rest of that. <laughs> um, but again, I encourage you to go out and check out that website uh, again. It's very well done. Um, there's also a list of the principals who have been at Washington High School at the main building. Um, and Bob Caselli is one of those. He came in last week um, and just shared some interesting facts and, and fun um, stories about Washington High School. Um, we do expect a number of uh, the former principals to be out at the 150th celebration tomorrow evening. Evening. I've heard from Bill Hoff, who was an assistant. Um, I've heard from or heard that someone told me Jan Nikolai was going to be there along with Bob and um, just a, a number of friends of.
of the Sioux Falls School District. So, so much to dig into, and I just encourage our community to rally around their school, whether it be the school they attended or one that's currently in their um, in their neighborhood, and celebrate the history of the Sioux Falls School District. Thank you, any questions? No, thank you, and thanks for reminding everyone about the opportunities to see both Jefferson and Ben Rifle this week, so appreciate that, thank you. On to conflicts of interest, there were no new conflicts presented, so we'll move on to approval of consent agenda, items 9A through D. Do I have a motion to approve? So moved. Second. A motion second. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Those are approved. On to 10A, approval of items of Sanford Healthcare System. Do I have a motion to approve? So moved. Second. A motion and second. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. That approves with one abstention from board member Ryder. On to reports of the superintendent. We'll start with continue to learn plan. And as Dr. Nold uh, gets his slides prepared, first of all, thank you to everybody who submitted either feedback online or via Let's Talk. And to those of you who came tonight, we appreciate that. I think, um, you know, there are so many things that go into making preparations for this coming school year. Um, we're at a different place as a community than we were probably last fall at this time. We are um, trying to balance all of the needs that many of you referred to with um, information that's often conflicting. And um, there is no 100% agreement on this. And so as a school district, what we wanna do is land on a plan um, that we think will help us open school. And as conditions change, just like we did last year, we'll evaluate where we are and um, see what we need to adjust. But our hope is that we can start school, we can continue school because um, our children need to be in class. And we know that that was important last year and it's important that we continue to prioritize children in school. So with that, I'm gonna turn it over to uh, Dr. Nold who will go over um, some of the adjustments that we made based on feedback, um, not, not a lot, but um, will give us an overview and some clarifications on the why behind a few of those changes. Thank you, and I will go through the report this uh, evening and hit a lot of the high points or the changes we had from when the report was posted on the 28th of July. So keep that in mind as I go through. This will not uh, hit on every single detail of the report. Obviously, that would be multiple pages we'll be going through this evening, but I will hit on those things that have changed. And so the purpose of the report tonight is obviously, as was stated, uh, to provide the school board with an update of the Continue to Learn plan which will guide us through that start of the 21-22 school year. This really hits in those district priorities with academic success, well-being, community engagement, and the effective use of our resources. So an explanation of the plan, the plan is a living document. We will continue to modify it or work with it as we need to as situations change within our community and our school system. The plan will guide us for the start of the 21-22 school year. The plan was created and revised based on feedback from students, parents, staff, community partners, and administration. I really stress each one of those as people add the feedback through the, the survey that we put out and posted on the website, but there's been so many other conversations and meetings that we've had with individuals, especially community partners with our, within our community here in the Sioux Falls area. The plan will serve as the official plan for the Sioux Falls School District, and the plan may be revised after staff and students begin the 21-22 school year, depending on need. The following goals were maintained as we went through the discussion of the plan and the, the changes to the plan. One, safety of the students and our staff, the education of our children, and we've hit on that, and Dr. Stabem has hit on that with, with the students and, and the need and necessity to be in the school setting and the ongoing operation of our schools. Another area, the plan was a summary, or the plan summary was posted to the Sioux Falls School District website for public feedback. The plan was translated into five additional languages, that summary was, so that for the ease of our, our use of our community members. In the plan, I did list some of the highlighted areas that were addressed within the plan. I will not read through each one of those, but if you go into the plan, you can see these highlighted, highlighted in many of the areas. But we touched on these and tried to clarify what changes there were from the previous plan, our return to learn plan, which guided us through the 2021 school year, 
and now this plan that will guide us through the 21-22 school year. So from the community input, we posted for community feedback on July 28th. A summary was created to assist the community. That's what was translated into the five different languages. The summary was translated in those five languages, as I stated, and we had over 700 points of feedback that were received through the posted online continue to learn plan. Changes and clarifications were made to the plan based on the feedback and additional information that we received from community members. So I will highlight now for you the, the language changes and clarifications, because some just asked for some clarification in certain points, and I'll highlight those for you at this time. So first of all, face coverings for students. Uh, the students at school, the pre-K through fifth grade, face coverings are encouraged to be worn because students under the age of 12 are not yet eligible for the COVID-19 vaccination. Sixth through 12th grade, plus because we have some of those individuals who will stay with us till the age of 21, they're encouraged to wear face coverings if not vaccinated. On the buses, it's encouraged to wear face coverings if not vaccinated. Vaccination verification will not be required. We would not ask that of any of our students. In the area of staff at school, all staff are encouraged to wear face coverings if not vaccinated. Buses, we are also encouraging our staff to wear face coverings if not vaccinated. And again, vaccine verification will not be a requirement. For guests to our buildings, that's guests and mentors. So individuals may come in and, and speak in classroom or help with special events. And then obviously our mentoring program that we dearly missed this past year. In the pre-K through fifth grade, face coverings are encouraged for adult guests, volunteers, and mentors. Sixth through 12th grade, face coverings are encouraged for adult guests, volunteers, and mentors, unless vaccinated. If a parent requests that a mentor wear a face covering while meeting with a mentee, the mentor will be expected to wear a face covering. That truly applies a lot of that in with our, our, our pre-K through fifth where they did not have the opportunity to have the vaccination. Before and after school supervision, especially in our elementary areas, that question came in. So to clarify, before and after school supervision practices will revert to the pre-COVID-19 protocols. And I clarify that, that some of our schools still did have uh, students coming in early before school. Uh, just part of the program and the protocols that they had at those individual schools. So it's just gonna revert back to that. It would not be something that's a requirement of the plan. Breakfast and lunch seating, physical spacing will be promoted during breakfast and lunch when practical. So we will not interfere with some of the other spaces that we had within the building that'll now be utilized by our students again. Some of our, our second gyms or some of the other spaces that we had that would have been taken up by that breakfast and lunch seating. Cleaning and prevention, uh, cleaning protocols were clarified in the plan. One of the biggest parts that were asked about on that is teachers were encouraged to wipe down student desks. They asked how often, and, and part of that was on a daily basis. So it wasn't necessarily between every single passing period, but on a daily basis to be able to wipe those things down. Conferences and, and parent meetings, we had quite a bit that had asked for that virtual option still, and that came from parents and it also came from staff. And so parent-teacher conferences will be offered in, uh, both in person and virtually. Our birth to three home visits will be offered both in person and virtually. And our IEPs, our individual education plan meetings can be offered as well in person and virtually. For positive cases, uh, the Department of Health will notify the Sioux Falls School District our health services department of any positive cases. We will then notify the building principals or designee. And if the positive case attended school or an activity during their infectious period, we would send a notification to the school, just like we have in the past. If a positive case was identified in that pre-K through five classroom, we would send an individual letter to the classroom as well. So each of those individuals within the classroom. Contact tracing, uh, if a student is deemed a, a close contact by the Department of Health, we'll uphold that with the Department of Health's recommendation and we would utilize their findings and exclude that person. Individual close contacts and quarantines will not be identified in the school setting. In other words, last year we had those individuals that would go out and do that within the school setting. We would not have that again, but we would go off the Department of Health. A general notification, again, letter that would be sent out to the schools or any of the individuals attending that school. So a general school letter would be sent. But again, if it happened in the classroom, we would send a letter out to that classroom. 
testing. Uh, this is something new that we're working on and will be coming through with the help of the state. Uh, but the Department of Health will make uh, test kits available at schools. The tests will be available for home use for symptomatic students so we can help to get those students back at a faster rate. So they'll be able to take those test kits home, check to see if it is in fact a, a case of COVID or not. Uh, we will not do the testing at the school, but they can pick those up and take them home. If the child is ill, we can send it home with the child, or if someone from the family wanted to come in and pick up one of those test kits, we could send that home with them as well. So that'll hopefully help our families to be able to get those children back into school at a much quicker rate. Field trips, they will be allowed again, and obviously we'd follow whatever the protocol was that I stated earlier with face coverings. Activities and events, there would not be the restrictions on the number of visitors who can be in attendance at those events. Virtual Academy, uh, we had some questions on that. So our Virtual Academy is currently at capacity. A wait list will be established should space become available. So if there's individuals that come off that list, which has happened, uh, then we can utilize those spaces and take next in line. So we'll have a wait list available for that. Uh, the ARP ESSER plan, which is the budgetary portion of this, and the school board has acted on, on that earlier this year in multiple different parts of the budget process. Uh, but that is also included in this plan, and there's a link in the ARP ESSER plan. Uh, through the Continue to Learn plan, there's a link to the ARP ESSER plan. In the ARP ESSER plan, there's a Continue to Learn link. So those things will be connected, and both of them are posted on the website for all to see. A couple things that we have within the document itself is a highlighted portion here that individuals can go in and look at. I know that was kind of nice. I know, I really, just really opened up and, and really kind of a revelation. <laughs> uh, I thank Molly. So if you thought I did that. Uh, so there is just kind of a summary page and I'll hit on a few of those things just to make sure people know that they are included in there as well. But there's a summary page that individuals can go to and we will again have this translated once approved into multiple languages so that individuals can reference this to know what's expected of them with the continue to learn plan. A couple of those additional highlights, uh, masks, we will still have those available for students. If they request one, uh, we'd be happy to provide those and have those available. Same thing, they're gonna be available on the buses for any student who requests one. So if a student comes up and requests one, they'd be given it to them. If they don't request one, obviously we would not be handing those out to them. Cleaning, uh, we'll still maintain those spray bottles and the wipes in the classrooms for the teacher use, so it'll be easily accessible. We still have the air filtration system, and we believe that has done some really good things for our students and their health and that of our staff as well. And we'll continue to run that time, that air time, run it earlier and then later into the evening. And then once a day with the high school, our high touch areas uh, with the cleaning of that. So any of those high touch areas, we'll look to make sure we have those things cleaned. Technology K through five will only take their device home in special circumstances. And as you saw last year throughout the year, we went one to one in all levels, but they'll only take those home in special circumstances. Six through 12 will obviously be allowed to take their device home daily. Building use, we'll go back to those no more protocols, which I know has made a lot of people happy in our community to be able to utilize our buildings again and put them at a great deficit as well in having our kids involved. After school programs are allowed again and, and we'll go into that full run. And then the academic support, there's a whole section in there of things that we had put into place with those uh, ARP ESSER dollars as far as academic supports through the summer. Some of that was approved to be utilized through the summer and we did utilize that with hundreds of students coming back into the schools this summer. And then some of that will be put into place for this fall and through this next year. But you can see that on, on pages 20 and 21 of the plan. And then a couple things just as far as the protocols that we utilize in our nursing area and, and some of the um, things with all students with symptomatic, but student staff must self monitor and that's a part of the plan as well. We do not collect those monitoring sheets, but they're screening sheets that families can utilize if they choose to at home. Any person with the symptoms listed on the screening sheet should follow the guidelines. Uh, they should not come to work, should not come to school. They should contact their health provider, uh, contact the school to inform them of the symptoms and the symptomatic students and staff are advised to seek COVID testing. And again, that testing packet will have that for them so they'll be able to utilize that home to be able to see uh, quite quickly with the COVID if it is truly a case of COVID or not and be back in school if it is not. If a positive follow, uh, or if positive follow positive case protocols, 
And obviously in a lot of those illnesses, especially like with a fever, we encourage them to be back 24 hours after they're fever free. And we would still do that. And they could utilize those test kits to see if it is a COVID. And then we'd also see the South Dakota Department of Health exclusion recommendations if that applies. One other part, we still are working with an isolation space that'll be in our health office area now instead of taking up an additional room. Uh, we still have staff utilizing the PPE equipment when they are working with symptomatic students. And we do have symptomatic students, if they're down in that office area, wear a mask if they are symptomatic. And staff caring for those ill students will follow that same PPE guidance. And there'll be a spacing uh, in that area, in that nurse's area of three to six feet for those students that would be symptomatic. So we're still keeping in place some of those protocols, especially for symptomatic students. As far as the committee participation, we had a guiding team of the Continue to Learn plan uh, that, that consisted of 18 members, but probably even more so, we had additional committee consultation with multiple individuals. Obviously, the feedback that we had um, that we posted on the website with the city of Sioux Falls, our, our health partners within the, the city, and just met with so many different individuals to help guide us through the, the creation of this plan uh, for the 21-22 school year. In summary, the Sioux Falls School District is committed to a safe learning environment for students and staff. The district developed the C2L plan to guide us as we prepare for the start of the 2021, or I'm sorry, 21-22 school year. The full C2L plan is attached as well as the full Sioux Falls School District ARP ESSER plan. The administrative recommendation is to approve the continue to learn C2L plan and Sioux Falls School District American Rescue Elementary and Secondary Schools Emergency Relief Plan, which is the ARP ESSER, as presented in the board report. I'd stand by for questions. Thank you, Dr. Nold. I know one that probably wasn't answered and maybe Dr. Staben where you could answer would be encouraged. What is the process gonna be for encouraged compared to what we did last year? One of the one of the conversations that we had with our local community health providers was just really um, focused on overall wellness for children, particularly K-5 students. And part of the um, consideration is that they have not yet been eligible to be vaccinated. And so encouraged means that it's a healthy thing to do. We're not going to actively push masks to students, but we also know that in other illnesses, RSV, measles, whooping cough, all of those things, a family may wanna um, do a preventative measure with a mask, but we're also trying to navigate with where our community is right now. So encouraged means it's a preventative that may be chosen by a family. So it won't be the school calling home to the family to get permission this year? No, no permission will be required. And that is a change from the 2021 plan. And um, I think you went over it, but I just want to clarify because with the close contact this year, since we won't be doing tracing within our buildings, it will just be solely relied upon upon the Department of Health when those timings. But we, so say we get notification, how will that timing mechanism kick in for when their first day is or something? So if, say it's in a household would be mm -hmm. probably about the only way that that's going to happen from now on. And much of that will be determined by the Department of Health because the Department of Health, when they have a positive case, will talk through that with the individual and then any close contacts. And most of those close contacts will come from the home, much more so probably than the school setting. And they talk through that of when were they last in contact with the individual and they get that information from them. So they determine that a lot of times as they go through uh, with a, a positive case to determine others in the family that were close contacts. And then they share that information and that's where we set when they would return back. And it's usually within that 10 day period or if they're symptomatic using the tests uh, to see that they are not positive. I just have a, a few observations. First, thank you to the persons addressing the board for not only being here, but staying to hear the return to learn plan and those in general that provided um, feedback. It does seem to be a dynamic situation. And with that, the living document and plan that you presented seems to be very appropriate. Um, that said, um, it continues to be important that our decisions and our actions um, look at what science and what the research is telling us, um, as well as our local data that we collect. Um, and using that to continue to guide our decisions and our actions um, 
based upon what the local needs are. How things look in Sioux Falls may be different than other places around the country. So to the extent that we use that local data as well as the science and the research to keep people safe um, is just critically important. And I think your plan speaks to that and, and the work that all everybody put in, all the stakeholders. Any other questions for Dr. Nold or Dr. Staben from the board? I would just add, I know it seems like when we talk about this that masks seems to be the hot topic. Um, so if we remove that, remove that factor, I would still very much encourage people to, um, whether you, when you're out school shopping, give your kids some hand sanitizer and um, remind them of good hygiene habits of washing their hands, of coughing and sneezing into their elbow, things like that. Just. You know, I think if we, a lot of us, if we go back to those basics, um, we can prevent a lot of things. Um, and COVID is probably one of those, but um, I just think I'm a nurse myself. And so I, I we can never um, speak too much about the importance of that uh, infection prevention of whatever it is. And, and we've had adults who are getting RSV and we've had lots of kids who are getting RSV. And so um, I think that we are seeing different illnesses now. and. And who's to say that three months from now, we might not be talking about COVID, we might be talking about something else that um, we're battling in our schools um, for a whole, whole nother reason. So I would just say, um, please encourage, you know, when your teachers ask for a hand sanitizer for their classroom, support them in that because they're trying to stay well so they can teach your kids um, and they want their students to be well and come to school too. So just going back to those basic hygiene practices can really make a big difference as well. I just like to, address Amy, I appreciate you coming in. I was a long-term sub and I, uh, I question kids about wearing masks or not wearing masks. And I hopefully they didn't think that I was after them or, but I know there was some pressure on kids, especially when we had the outbreaks and, and kids are like, hey, okay, I, you know, if you don't wear a mask, even if I have mine on, I have to miss 14 days. And that was an issue. But I will say how proud of I am coming showing up and uh, we appreciate your comments and students are always welcome. Good job. Okay, seeing no other questions, do I have a motion to uh, approve the continue to learn plan? So moved. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any other further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. That is approved. I, I'd also like to reiterate, I love everyone that's engaged in the process. I think you all saw there were 600 plus comments on the survey. So that really shows people read through the document and had questions and comments. We all read all the emails and phone calls we received from everyone in the community. So thank you. It, um, a question that was often asked of us is, when you drafted this, why you did it this way? So it's, this might be a good time to explain we um, view the document the same time the public does so that we aren't biased or have already preconceived notions what it should look like so that we're reading it like the public is and so that we can accept all input in it hopefully fairly too. So we see it then, we make those determinations once we get the feedback and so forth and help make any changes and so forth on that. So, um, and also support your children coming back to school in a positive manner, because we all know that they model how we act. And so um, before, uh, looking forward to August 26th, when we all return to school and help your teachers out and staff in your schools too. So thank you very much. On to the district priorities, Dr. Stephen. Next item. Another important document tonight on our agenda, and I'm just gonna go through the high spots. Again, this is available online, and this will become kind of our guiding document as we head into this year. We are focused on continuous improvement. I'm not the least bit offended that you're all leaving now and I can. <laughs> These are so exciting. Thank Come you on. for coming. <laughs> Um, but we're really trying to be in that continuous improvement mode. And these are, are, are some of the big things that we are undertaking. Um, COVID or no COVID last year, we um, have been actively working on what are the most important things that we need to focus on as we kind of saw the end of the last district strategic plan now moving into kind of this next version of it, which is a little bit more cyclical in nature. Instead of kind of looking at five years, we're looking at one year, we'll be continually reviewing and revising. Amazing. 
And so um, these are pretty ambitious goals, even for the next year. A lot of things that bring coherence to some of the things that are already working well in our district, as well as bringing additional enhancements. Some things might be brand new, um, but all in a central focus to support our students learning in the classroom. So the, um, the plan is broken up into um, some main areas. None of these are unfamiliar to all of you. Academic success is the first one. This is the area that really looks at um, those initiatives that are academically focused. Um, we talk about um, having high achievement for every student, and that, of course, is our highest priority, no matter what. We have to be focused on, on academics and really having great outcomes for our students. We also refer in this section to a tiered system of supports and making sure that we have our focus on evidence-based instruction and using our data to really inform any of the interventions or instructional decisions that we make. And when we talk about this, um, we refer to something called the multi-tiered system of supports, or MTSS. And we put Sioux Falls in front of that because this is the framework for our district. It really takes all of those things that we do around core instruction and puts it into a good solid framework, whether we're helping students that might be falling behind or helping students that need to be um, having additional enrichment or acceleration in their learning. All of those things are important. So we're working with um, putting a, a better version of this framework in place for all of our schools. We're also focusing on college and career readiness and how that looks right now embedded into our current courses, looking at that full continuum from elementary all the way through high school. Our district will be engaged in a study this year to really look at, do we have things articulated well? Are we clear where we have a dual credit? Are we looking at the interests of our students and what needs to be modified all the way through so we also have great alignment um, so that as a student is maybe interested in something, they can pursue a, a version of that in middle school as an elective to really help inform their choices in at a high school level for the courses that they wanna pursue. And then of course, aligning our professional development to support that work so that our staff feels equipped to help our students in all of the right ways. The next area is in a supporting role of academic excellence, and that's well-being. Wanting to make sure that not only are we attending to the academic needs of our students, but also those um, that fall into that social emotional realm. We want to make sure that we have safe and inclusive environments for our students. We want to nurture their learning. That means helping them with all of those other skills, making friends, um, dealing with some of the hard things that come their way, and really um, equipping our staff to notice some areas is where they might need some extra supports. Of course, we know that COVID um, is one factor that we know has impacted some students with mental health needs and really wanting to just have that whole child picture as we look at our district planning. So within that, again, it's that MTSS uh, area of support, focusing on some of the behavior needs of our students and equipping our staff with that targeted uh, professional development and then making sure that people have good access to the supports that they may need might be through our website and having easier access to find what they need, might be through our counseling staff or um, other staff members in our schools, or with our wraparound supports that we often have with a lot of our district uh, partners and other uh, community services that are experts maybe in, in a need um, and can provide supports in that way. And like I said, the targeted uh, professional development that supports all of those things. The next big area is community engagement. And I, I think over and over again how fortunate we are to be in a city like Sioux Falls. I've said it other times where it feels like the city gives the school district a hug every day because we have so many willing partners who give to us in so many ways. We wanna make sure that those relationships are really intentionally cultivated. Um, adding opportunities for our children, whether that's through internships or um, work and career related opportunities, the programs that we offer, and also knowing that this is a critical area for the future of our community. This isn't just for the benefit of our students and our school district, it's, it's really the future of Sioux Falls. And so when we look at the initiatives in this area, we think about the partnerships that we have, strengthening those, celebrating those, and looking at how can we continue to enhance those. 
um, really looking at how are we listening well as a, a community partner? How are we engaging our stakeholders? Are we on the right track with things related to career education? What are our kids interested in? What should we be partnering with other entities to add more value? And then really looking at that overall Sioux Falls School District experience. How are we great partners to all of the, the um, organizations that exist that are already doing um, wonderful things for our students? How do we build on that? How to create a great environment for everybody who comes in contact with our schools and our school district? Another supporting role that's hugely important is how we foster staff excellence. We want to make sure that in this uh, environment right now where everybody is trying to gather people to work, that we are intentional about building the relationships that we have with our own staff. We want to make sure that they are able to learn and grow in their professional skills. We want to make sure that um, people who come to work for us stay with us, that they feel valued and seen, and that um, their overall satisfaction working with us in the Sioux Falls School District is uh, nurtured every single day. We want to invite people to work with us and we want them to stay. So the initiatives within this area, of course, are making sure that the professional learning that we're offering is relevant. One of the things that we heard loud and clear through our listening sessions last year when we were out at all of our schools is that people want to be good at what they do. It was also clear in our different departments, our tech department, our operations, our nutrition services. People want to have the right skills to do their jobs well as they serve our students. And we want to make sure that as we offer things, it's very well aligned so that we're using our time and our resources well. And then continuing to focus on staff recruitment, recognition, and retention. We know that there are a lot of opportunities out there now. And one of the things that we don't know is what the impact last year had on our current and future workforce, knowing that some students might have um, held out to wait on student teaching. They might have delayed entry into an ed program for a year. Um, they might have taken a year off. Any number of things that might lessen our candidate pools as we move forward. And so we have to be very intentional about those things. And then really um, encourage everybody who works in our district to add value, as well as our community partners. We're going to be doing some things with some crowdsourcing where we say, give us your best ideas, and we're going to put those into practice as much as we possibly can. Added to that, we already have some great programs through our school foundation where teachers can get innovation grants, and we just want to continue to foster that culture of innovation and really adding um, great ideas and putting lots of heads together around that. And finally, we have to be about the business of using our resources well as we look at how we plan for the future. Um, this district has a history of um, planning well, planning well into the future. Evidence of that is as our two new schools open this week, the boundary changes that have resulted in um, better enrollment numbers as we've kind of evened those things out and we have to be thinking now about the future. It's great what's happened, but work to be done um, as stewards of our current current resources. So we got to start with really analyzing what are our future facility needs, what does that look like for placement in our community, how do we accommodate growth as we see what that's going to continue to do. Um, we also have to be looking at our transportation services. How does that relate to um, students' ability to access programs and activities? We want them to be involved. We know that's critical to their engagement. And if transportation is a barrier, we want to look for some creative solutions. And then we have our child nutrition program where we're looking to enhance uh, student participation, breakfast partici participation, and the overall quality of our nutrition program. And then finally, always advancing our fiscal responsibility. How are we good stewards of the taxpayer dollars that we are entrusted with? So I leave you with this quote, um, just the nutshell version of this. There are no limits on how far we can go when we learn together. That's why our plan is called Learn Together. That's learning together as a community, as staff, with our students, and all of us really seeking um, to grow forward so that we are striving to create the very best experience for every person in our district so we can become the best in the nation. I've made that no secret, and we are well on our way. Um, this ambitious plan for next year, I think, sends us in a good future-focused direction. A lot of work involved, and our teams are up to the task. So with that, I would entertain any questions the board may have. 
Well, thank you, first of all. Uh, great plan. Um, there's been lots of input throughout the year. It's really addressed some concerns and or exciting um, programs we wanted to look at as a district going forward. It's so exciting to actually be proactive and going forward instead of having reactive due to the last year of COVID and superintendent search and those type of things. So thank you for helping us keeping the ship moving forward through this um, very interesting year and that we have exciting programs coming forward. And the full plan is on the website. So if people want to read through all of the details on that, they can ask questions through Dr. Stavum or any of us board members on going through that. But you'll see there's some exciting programs. And I'm just thinking one of the public comments tonight, Chad Bishop with the first Lego League, it's doing those things like the after school programs to engage students, not just at the high school age, but middle school and younger so that they have a commitment and excitement of coming to school because as we all know many students maybe academics isn't where they are is their strong suit but there's something else we can get them hooked into school and wanting to stay in school and attending school and that can be through any of our extracurriculars or mentoring or those type of things so thank you very much you're welcome any questions for dr Staten? no a couple of things that stuck out to me that i um appreciate and i think there's maybe been given a lot of lip service to it. So I'm really excited to see how this um, comes about is the really tailoring the professional development for teachers and making them feel like, wow, I just went to something that was meaningful and I can go back and put into use. And sometimes we hear that, you know, it's always a one size fits all type of a program. And so I'm excited for hopefully teachers to feel like they were able to attend something that was specific to their classroom or their learning environment um, and find it useful um, and have them look forward to in-service times and collaborating with their like peers um, to be able to learn from each other too. So I think, um, as you mentioned, it's it's getting harder and harder to hire um, good people, not just in education, but in a lot of different places. And so it's really about what can you do to appreciate and retain the people that you have. And so it's important for us to take these steps to keep the great teachers that we have now and hopefully have them tell their friends, hey, this is, these are the cool things that we get to do in Sioux Falls. You should come and look for a job here too and, and kind of build up that pipeline yeah. of, of people while we can. Yeah, and the detail work, you'll notice we're bringing back one of the things that has been in existence called the Summer Symposium, where it's really a great opportunity for teachers to share their knowledge with each other and other staff members as well. We also have some plans for next summer that I understand are coming online that a um, couple of our librarians are spearheading in uh, collaboration with, is it Augustana, um, for some conference work. And so, you know, getting those things back up and running are really important to creating that synergy that exists on a professional level with our staff. Last week when we attended the Association of School Boards South Dakota Convention, a speaker uh, gave the quote, uh, it's a Victor Franco quote, uh, something like, love is uncovering the potential in others. And this, this plan, plans can be so um, big and mighty and ambitious goals, but when I sit back and really listen to it, it just seems to me there's a lot to, that's speaking into the tools and the resources and the skills for our teachers, our staff, our administrators, um, students that really help to uncover what their potential is. And, and it just really gets to the heart of what the mission is and what we're trying to do, so. Good, thank you for noticing. And the community will also notice that our work sessions will be using a lot of what these priorities are going forward. So you'll get more updates and more input as to what um, we're looking to do and an opportunity for you all to come along for the ride and help us guide Absolutely. through that. Absolutely. So I believe the request is to acknowledge our new district priorities for the 21-22 school year. Thank you. Do I have a motion to acknowledge? So moved. Do you have a second. second? I have a motion and a second. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. That is acknowledged. Thank you very much. Now on to policy revisions, I believe. Yes. Um, we have two policies on tonight. Uh, the first one is regarding student attendance. The second um, is on the administration of medical cannabis to qualifying students. And so these are both on for first reading. With that, I'm going to ask Mr. Arns for a brief overview of the changes contained within those policies. Um, 
gosh, you know, I don't know. I'm new with everybody up here. I, I would say you could do it from right there. Okay, just briefly, um, and you have the, the policies in front of you. Um, <clears throat> two, two policies, uh, the first changes to JH uh, and JHR. There's no changes to the policy uh, here on student attendance, but minor changes to the regulation to add additional attendance codes. Um, and then also to clarify when calls made are gonna be made to parents, which is after five days, just because there's so much switching at the high school level um, in those first five days. And then uh, the larger of the two here is a new policy on the administration of medical cannabis to qualifying students. Uh, this is a new policy to permit this administration uh, to qualifying students. Qualifying students meaning that they have a valid identification and a practitioner's recommendation um, that it can't be reasonably accomplished outside of school hours um, and that it's administered by the designated caregiver. And this is someone that's approved by the Department of Health. Um, these, this policy is in accordance with the Department of Education's administrative rules. Um, also, a model policy based off of uh, the Associated School Boards after consultation with other school districts in the state um, and also school attorneys around the state. Um, so these also posted with the policy is the medical administration plan um, that a parent would fill out. Um, these are individualized to meet the student's individual needs while preventing a disruption to the educational environment. So I'd ask if you don't have any questions uh, that you acknowledge the first reading of these policies with the understanding that they will return for a second reading on September 13th. And just for a point of clarification for the public, um, our school buildings will not be storing medical cannabis, nor will any staff be administering. Correct. Medical. Thank you. Any other questions for Attorney Knox? Seeing none, do I have a motion to approve the first reading? So moved. Second. I have a motion and second. All those in favor of approving the first reading on JH, JHR, and new policy JHCDE, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. That moves on to September 13th. Uh, anything else for the good of public knowledge? Just a reminder about tomorrow, 11.30 and 4.30 at Jefferson, and Thursday, 4.30 at Ben Rifle. If you'd like to see the new buildings and come out and see it. So thank you very much. If you have any other further questions, don't hesitate to reach out to administration or the board. Do I have a motion to adjourn? So, so moved. Second. I have a motion and second. All those in favor of adjournment signify by saying aye. 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 We are adjourned.